welcome back guys um today i'm going to get into the topic of what the supply chain is one of my subscribers did ask me to explain it or to get into it so i wanted to fulfill that you know that requirement or that request to say hey someone asked about it i encourage my subscribers to ask question and if you ask question i should answer it because that's what i encourage Therefore, I'm going to dive into the topic. Now, the topic can be as detailed as I possible can get. However, for the sake of time constraint, I'm going to narrow it down to, you know, almost bullet points in a sense, but still to cover the general areas. Bear with me. So, the supply chain really is, if you think about a bridge... It has two ends and there's a, an arch that goes over for you to get from point A to point B. Essentially, I'm probably going to use the bridge to explain what the supply chain is. But, yeah. The supply chain, on one end, you have raw material. On the other end, you have a finished good. The supply chain essentially is everything from the raw material to the finished good and everything in between. All right, follow me. But for us to even get to the concept of the raw material, say for example, this is a spice bottle. It has a cap. It has a bottle. It would have had a label on it, but I took the label off and there are spices in it. There had to be some planning at some point to say, hey, we want something and we want it to look like this and we want it to taste like the content that is in it. And that essentially is the first step of the supply chain, which is planning. After we plan and we come to the realization of what we actually want, the cap has to be red. It, had to be, it has to be a certain dimension. The bottle has to be a certain size and certain dimension. The content within the bottle has to be a certain thing and the label has to be a certain thing. And that in essence is the planning stage of the, the supply chain. But once we have established all of that, we have to now get into the aspect of sourcing and purchasing and procurement, right? We have all of this and we know we want it, we now need to go and find out where can we get it. So that essentially is part two of the supply chain. We know what we want, now we have to go buy it. But before we can buy it, you have to get up and go to the supermarket for say, hey, I'm baking a cake, the cake wants some flour, I don't have flour in the pantry, I need to go and buy some flour. You go to one supermarket, they don't have any flour. You get up and you go to another supermarket. But in the supply chain, sometimes we have, you know, vendors who supply a particular thing. And sometimes in some scenario, we have more than one vendors who supplies the same thing. And I'm not going to dive into that because that's going to take me on a, a tangent that I don't have the time for. And I don't want to lose you guys a lot. I don't want to lose you guys along the way, essentially. So now that we have found vendors who can get us the bottle, can get us the cap, can get us the ingredients that is in the bottle. And in a sense, they don't all come from the same place. But we need them to be at the same place to make the finished goods. It can be very complicated when explaining the supply chain. Anyways, so we know what we want and we want to get it. All right, planning, procurement. Now, we, a part of procurement is having contracts and inco terms and, you know, making sure that they have the right quality, quantity at the price range that we want it to be and making sure that they can deliver it whenever we want it to. And then there is that element of logistics, which is taking all of these little components, raw material and packaging from all over the world and bringing them into one central area for us to have production. But once we get into having them delivered at a particular place, we're talking about having a massive warehouse. This is just one spice bottle. If you go to the supermarket and look at the spice rack, there are probably 50 different spices, 70 different spices, 80 different spices that you can think of 
they all go through the same process in some scenario they have the same bottle and the same cap just different ingredients inside of it and different label but they all go goes through the same thing all right now we have all of the components reaching at the warehouse we have you know the warehousing team we have the receiving team and then they go through a level of what we call is order picking so if you place an order at amazon the order goes to a fulfillment center and they have to go somewhere in their warehouse and pick that particular item that you wanted from a list that specified that daniel wants all of this and we need to go and find it and put it in one central area so we can package them all and send them to this location which is the daniel the same thing happens in manufacturing they have order picking and when they pick the order it goes to it goes to the production line right when it gets to the production line it goes through a system where an empty bottle is placed on a conveyor belt then you have the spices squeezing into it then it goes to another part using the same conveyor belt then you put a cap on it then it moves on to a next stage you put a seal on it goes on to a next stage and then you put a label on it and that is operations that can get very technical and if your machine breaks down with um which produces maybe hmm, your most income for a company your company can be in a lot of trouble in terms of missing customer orders in terms of having your your customers going to your your competitors I mean i can dive right into this and i maybe should do another video on independent areas of the supply chain for further clarity but for the sake of this we are currently at operations now operations finish and we have finished goods and sometimes they're packaging packages like six in a box or 12 in a box or whatever and they're sent to a distribution center right so when it gets to a distribution center, then we start, we start filling customer orders. So basically if Walmart says, um, I need a hundred thousand of this particular spice, they're going to take it to a Walmart distribution center. And then Walmart is going to further break it down based on what location needs what one location location might need you know five thousand another location may need fifteen thousand depending on you know how many customer that particular location is is serving but then when it gets to that location they pull out a, a package of six or a package of twelve and they have them in individual bits and pieces looking like this as the finished goods right so all right let me bottle it up all in a little summary first you have to know what you want then you have to source it then you have to get all the components in the warehouse at the same time then you have to go through a process of operation then you have put them in box and then you're going to send them off to a distribution center and then that distribution is going to send it off to another distribution center that is going to break it down into smaller components so it ends up on the shelf looking something like this that essentially is the supply chain and the supply chain works the same way for every industry now the technicality of each aspect of the supply chain in other industry may differ but essentially it's the same thing the thing with food manufacturing, you have a lot of stipulation that you typically wouldn't have in automotive. You have to make sure that your food, your bottle, your caps, your whatever is safe, certified or whatever. Maybe not the bottle, maybe not the cap, but the actual component in the bottle, um, the actual machineries that are, are um, affiliated with making these products. They have to have food certified certification kind of in it. But if you were making a, a motor vehicle, you would not have had that. And those are the little, little, the little items that are different. But essentially, all manufacturing system, they are the same. It's knowing what you want and finding it and going through operations and having a fixed goods. And that's essentially how the supply chain works. 
I may do another video or videos dissecting it a little bit more because we could go on about this for days but I wanted to get the overview in first before I even try to explain anything else but thank you guys for watching